Welcome back. If you read our viewer comments every time we do a story about a new development, it is obvious many of you feel our county commissioners and planning boards are in the pocket of developers, but are they? No doubt Carlos Baruf, the Bendersons, Pat Neal are incredibly generous with the candidates that they support. The commissioners, commissioners who are their beneficiaries of that generosity claim that has nothing to do with how they vote. No doubt before Carlos Baruf rammed through Aqua by the Bay, he failed at getting approval for Long Bar Point. Both developers and those who oppose that can whip out explanations to prove their point. And joining us for more is former Sarasota Commissioner John Thaxton, Mary Doherty, Executive Director of the Gulf Coast Builders Exchange, Barbara Hines of Manasota 88, and Andy Mele of the Sarasota Manatee Sierra Club. So I'm going to throw this all open to you because, as I said at the outset, whether it's Aqua by the Bay or something in Sarasota County, every time we do one of these stories, I'm going to come in the next morning, look at our Facebook page, and I can't tell you how many people will write in and say, developers around here get anything they want, and they link those decisions by the boards or planning boards or the county commission to the campaign cash that, that flows in. And Mary, I'll just throw it open to you. Okay, well, if only that were true. Of course, that's not true. Um, these developers are taking the risk. They're the businessmen. They're the entrepreneurs taking the risk. They're going through multiple levels of approvals, both local, state, federal approvals, before they can push or get their project approved. Um, what we ask for when we make campaign contributions is an open door and an open mind. And the last thing we want to do, you said ram through his project, it's the last thing we want to do because when you get a good person elected to office, you don't want to bring them bad issues and get them unelected. It's about good government. It's about getting those approvals. Uh, John, you have been there. You have been on the hot seat. I mean, has there been pressure uh, in, in not only to approve projects, but the implication that, you know, if you need campaign contributions in the future, it, that would be help uh, if you go their way. I think there's pressure on both sides. I think it's unfair to characterize the pressure as only coming from the development side. There's also the community interest side that also applies pressure. Um, I received, um, there was just a list given there of the major uh, influencers, the developers, some have called them the kingmakers of the development community. I received contributions, significant contributions from all of them, um, and I don't think any of them would characterize me as an elected official in the pocket right. of, of a developer. So I don't think inherently just because they give the contributions that they are um, entitled to some sort of a decision. Um, but elected officials want to get re-elected, and to get re-elected it requires one of two things. It requires cash to attain votes, or it requires a significant grassroots effort to get votes. So I worked very um, earnestly and sincerely with the Audubon Society and the Sierra Club you know, to, to get those votes while, I believe, giving the developers a fair shake. Andy, you have been on the forefront of so many of these battles, and, um, and sometimes you come up empty. And I know how you feel about this. You, you've heard what Mary and John have to say. Sure. Um, uh, having John at the table is, is actually a disappointment because uh, he's always been regarded as a pretty good guy and a uh, pretty fair guy, exactly, so as you say. So it's a I'm disappointed. I wanted somebody I could sink my teeth into. Um, <laughs> but the fact, you know, right, so the, the, what they say is, you know, I mean, reasonably, they take the risks. What Mary said is, is, is great and everything. They take the risks. I understand risks. I used to be a businessman. Uh, but it's all being done in the name of the profit. It's not some sort of generosity that these developers are giving to the community. The community doesn't need more development. It doesn't need to lose more habitat, more open space, more community character. We don't need to have a wall of buildings beside Sarasota Bay on the last two and a half mile stretch of, of, of unspoiled land. Barbara, I just want to get you in here before we have to go to our commercial break. You heard what Andy just had to say. I think that money definitely does have a severe impact. Now, I agree with Andy that John was probably, if you could get a fit, just design a fair legislator, he, you have him sitting at your, you have him sitting at your table. Unfortunately, in Mr. Baruch's case, he was also the chair of the 
of Swift Mud, the permitting agency. Right. And we just have to take a quick break. Thank and we you. did uh, invite Carlos Brew to be on tonight, but he had other plans. We are just getting warmed up. We'll have much more on developers. Do they usually get what they want right after we check the first word of weather? So stay with us. Our guest joining us right now for Final Thoughts. And Mary, I'm going to start with you because what I'm getting out of this conversation tonight is obviously there are people who oppose some of these developments who say that it is not a level playing field. Well, of course, I disagree with them. I mean, I think John made a very good point earlier. It's about the relationships. It's about, you know, having good government, having good people in elected office. And I told my friend Nora Patterson I was going to use her as an example this evening when the Builders Exchange actually endorsed Nora for her race, which was surprising to some. She said to me, she said, now, Mary, you know, your guys can't think that I'm going to go along with them on every issue they bring to me. And I said, Nora, did I ever ask you that? And she said, well, no. I said, what we do ask is for an open door and an open mind, then it's incumbent upon us to bring you good issues. John, what responsibility does the public have here? Be uh, you know, on one hand, you know, we've covered these, these uh, public uh, sessions where, where the public could come out, and, and it, they've been very heated on a whole variety of different projects. Um, but in general, the voters out there, do they have more of a responsibility to get informed about these projects and what's happening in this community? Well, I think they have more of an obligation and a responsibility to be engaged, informed at the local level than they do at the national level. It is really so disappointing to me when I see election returns coming back on local elections with 15, 20, 30 percent um, engagement. You know, this democracy, this republic was built on an informed, engaged electric, electorate, and we've lost that. And so uh, I'll, I'll put it to you, Barbara. I, it, with a lot of these elections, when we're talking about the county commission, as John said, the voter turnout is so low uh, that even if you have an issue with, with some of these candidates, nobody's really coming out in mass uh, to vote them out of office. Well, at least in, in our area, a lot of people are, vote, are voting by mail. And a lot of people are voting by mail at their, um, north, at their north, northern residence. I okay. mean, they're, com they're coming. Right. And so people, they really, you can't make a face-to-face -face when, the, when, the folk, when the folks aren't, aren't there and all that they get is what they get on, on print on local elections, and it's smart. You, I'll give you the last word. We have a numbers problem. The pro-development candidates, 99.999% of the time, run on the Republican ticket. People don't know or pay attention to and have no way of knowing about local politics. They, 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 they go in there, they vote there, you know, for the people they know about, they hear about the presidential candidates, congressional, senate, whatever like that. They get to the local and they just flip down the party line. It's uh, 133,000 people in Sarasota Republican, 95,000 registered Democrats. Yeah, but and you know, around here, a lot of Republicans are against development. Well, the, the, it, I, it's an interesting thing, and it's something we should talk about in another panel, because I know you're out of time, but those referenda, the, the land preservation, the, the, the one that funded Florida Forever, the one that, that, the good solar bill last year, those ones, those passed by like 78%, and yet, so clearly, there's, there's more to this than meets the eye. We'll have to leave it there. FYI, you can watch past discussions on demand. They're available on Apple TV, Amazon Fire, and Roku. And just a reminder that if you want to stay up to date on the latest local breaking news and see alerts on your phone instantly, iPhone and iPad users, you will need to download our new news app. Just go to our, the App Store and search for WWSB or My Suncoast. Android users, you don't have any problem. Verizon will update it automatically. We want to thank all our guests for being here tonight. John Thaxton is a former Sarasota County Commissioner. Mary Doherty Slap is Executive Director of the Gulf Coast Builders Exchange. Barbara Hines is with Minnesota 88, and Andy Mele is with Sarasota Manatees Sierra Club.